to this mountain be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he says. Verily I say unto you, whosoever shall say unto this mountain be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he says. shall say unto this mountain be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart but shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass he shall have whatsoever he says right we have the faith of the son of god Amen. and uh, we welcome you to another episode just like him i'm shamma and i'm here with my sister shalom and we believe today the word of god is going to encourage you and strengthen you and give you hope in life because you know the word of god it always lifts us up it never yes. puts us down Amen. so be encouraged this day that's right the song that we were just singing is from the bible in the book of mark chapter 11 where it talks about having the faith of god the faith of God is not just merely believing something. The faith of God is very powerful. And as we're going to study today, the faith of God can produce marvelous results in your life. It can heal sicknesses and cause you to be healed in your body. It can forgive your sins. And the faith of God can cause you to overcome whatever situations that you're facing, any problems that you're facing. The faith of God is really powerful. Yeah, that's right. You know, that's one of the most amazing things that God has given us. Mm. You know, in fact, we're going to see in His Word how, you know, faith can be used in, you know, any area of our lives. Yeah. You know, be it um, for healing for our bodies or, you know, for big things that we have to face. You know, the faith right. of God is going to enable you to overcome life's challenges. Mm. So let's um, start in the Word of God. Let's go to the book of Hebrews chapter 11. We're talking about the faith of God. And we're going to see how, you know, how God, you know, He is our example when it comes to using faith. Because, you know, sometimes we think, well, what is faith? It's just something that you believe in. But, you know, faith is more than that. It's, it's more of like a lifestyle. Yes. The Bible teaches us that, you know, when you're, when you're a child of God, that you ought to live by faith. It's like, you, right. it's like you're living and you're breathing faith. Hmm. Right? And that's, yeah. that's what we're going to see today. Yeah. It's a higher form of just living by your five senses. Mm. And in fact, 
you can overcome so many things when you just know what this faith of God can help you do, it yeah. can produce in your life. So, yeah, Hebrews, let's read that scripture in Hebrews chapter 11, verse yes. 3. What we're going to do is we're going to start and see, you know, God is our best example when it comes to using faith. Hmm. So we're going to start reading from verse 3, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 3. It says, through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Yeah. So this is what God is saying. You know, God says that everything we see around us in this world, it all started off by using faith. Yeah. Nothing else, it just come. It's mm. through faith. God used words to create this world. Yeah. And the words that He used, He believed that it would come to pass. Yeah. That's how He used His faith. Everything that we see today, the flowers, the trees, the mountains, yeah. the seas, all that didn't just come into existence. Mm. God had to speak it out. Mm. If you read in the book of Genesis 1, it talks about how God created the world. He said when, when it was really dark and it was empty and there was nothing that could be seen. This, this world wasn't like this when it was, before it was created. Mm. It was dark and empty. That's right. And God said, let there be light. Mm. He called forth what He desired yeah. to see. Mm. Let there be light. And His words created light yeah. in the midst of darkness. Yeah, I mean, just imagine, you know, like when there is darkness all around and um, well, you don't know exactly what to do, but you know, God at that moment, He started using faith and He started yeah. speak, speaking, you know, to the, He started saying, let there be light and there was light. And He used His words actually to create this world. That's actually what faith is. Yeah. Sometimes we, we have a tendency always of walking in the natural because, you know, what we see and, you know, what we're feeling and, you know, things like that. We always tend to talk what we see yeah. instead of what we don't believe, believe mm. in. Yeah. And this verse very clearly shows us that, you know, it was through faith that God created the world. He started speaking, let there be light, hmm. and there was no light at all. Yeah. But and you know, yeah. By faith, you create what you desire. That's mm -hmm. how God did it. And it was not just for God. Yeah. It was for us too. Mm -hmm. Because if you read in Genesis 1, 26, it says that we are made in the image of God. Yeah. We were made just like God. Mm. The way God speaks, the way He does things, we have the same ability to do it. Mm. And so, because we are made in the image of God, we have the faith of God. Yeah. Romans 12, 3 says that God has given to us the measure of faith. faith. Yeah. The very same faith that God has, we have too. Mm. In fact, you know, sometimes we think that faith is only for God that, well, God is all powerful. Well, of course He can create the world and He can do anything. But yeah. you know what's so amazing? God has actually given us this same faith. When you receive Jesus into your heart, you know, God, He puts that same faith on the inside of you. Yeah. Let's uh, go to that scripture, it's amazing. In Mark chapter 11, verse 22, it tells us that we can have the same faith of God. Yeah. Like the song that we were singing, have right. faith in God. Hmm. Let's read that scripture in Mark chapter 11. In verse 22, Mark chapter 11, verse 22 says, And Jesus answering said unto them, Have faith in God. Now there's another um, meaning of that word, have faith in God. It means have the God kind of faith. Yeah. And you know, Jesus is speaking to his disciples here and saying, You can have the same kind of faith. Right. But we are also able to use the scripture in our lives. Mm. So let's read that once more. It says, Jesus answering said unto them, Have faith in God hmm. and another translation of it is have the God kind of faith yeah wow that should just absolutely amaze you to think that you can have the same faith that mm. God has it simply means to operate in the type of faith that God yeah. is operating in mm. and if you see this verse is a continuation of what happened in the verses above yeah if we read in uh, the same chapter mark 11 verse 12 it says and on the morrow, when they were come from Bethany, Jesus was hungry. And he, seeing a fig tree afar off, having leaves, he came, if happily he might find anything thereon. And when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, mm. for the time of figs was not yet. And Jesus answered and said unto it, No man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever. And his disciples, they heard it. And then if you go down on to verse 20. And in the morning as they passed by, they saw the fig tree 
it was dried up from the roots. Mm. And where are we? Verse 21. And Peter calling to remembrance, he said unto him, Master, behold, the fig tree which you cursed is withered away. How powerful is that? Jesus spoke to the fig tree and cursed it and it withered away. Within 24 hours, they saw the results. Yeah. You know, this is, this is really interesting because in this example, we're going to see how, um, how powerful our words are and um, how we can use our words to actually create things. And you know, it's so important that we have faith in this life. Otherwise, we're going to just live life just going about, you know, day to day, whatever comes and goes. But you know what? If you learn how to use faith, you're going to start to realize that you can create your own world. Yeah. You can create a world of life around you and create yeah. a world of joy around you. And uh, that's the same kind of faith that God used to create the world. Yeah. So we're going to talk more about just that. Just like God created the world through yeah. the words that He spoke, mm -hmm. we can create things in our world. And yeah. how is that? In, mm. in a place of sickness, you can say, Lord, by your stripes that you bore on the cross for me, I am healed. And so what you're doing is declaring the word of God and your body is responding to that word of God. Mm. Just like God speaks and believes, you can speak and believe and yeah. see things in your life. Mm. Yeah. And through this example, we see, you know, we, we saw the story about how Jesus, he actually, he cursed a fig tree. And it yeah. says, you know, how, um, you know, Peter, he comes to Jesus the next day and he notices that the fig tree that Jesus had cursed had just withered away. And, you know, Jesus was trying to show them an example, not to curse trees or anything, but he was trying to show us how, you know, powerful words can be. Yeah. You know, words are really powerful. Sometimes we, we take words for granted, but words are really powerful. Right. They're either filled with blessing or cursing. So we got to choose what we're going to speak. So mm. let's go on to verse... Um, now 22, so we see, you know, Jesus tells the people, Jesus tells his disciples, have faith in God. Yeah. And he's trying to tell them that you can have the same God kind of faith. You can do the same, the thing, same thing that, that I, did I did to this fig tree. To the fig tree. Yeah, and let's see what verse 23 has to say. In verse 23 it says, Verily I say unto you, that whoever shall say unto this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass. He shall have whatever he says. Yes. Right. That's an amazing verse right there. Mm. Right. Now that was pretty quick, but we're going to take each word or each line and see what it really means. Yeah. Jesus says, if you say unto the mountain. Now, what does that mean? What do you mean say to the mountain? Well, in this case, a mountain is referring to um, some kind of a hindrance mm -hmm. in your way. You know, some kind of a big thing that's standing in front of you that's hindering you. And could we know be a problem. Could be a problem. Or, you know, in life, we know that there's definitely a lot of hindrances. hindrances. So many kinds of hindrances. I mean, there's, uh, there's sickness yeah. and, um, you know, there's disease. Mountains of, yeah. uh, like, lack and want. Mm. And maybe a spirit of fear that yeah. you have to overcome. Yeah. Or it could be a spirit of um, strife mm. in your home or anywhere else. Any yeah. mountain is referring to a hindrance that can... So when Jesus is saying mountain here, he's not just referring only to a literal mountain, but he's talking about like a hindrance, a problem, a mm. trouble situation in yeah. your way. And he's saying, you know, we got to speak to that mountain. You may say, what do you mean? How can I speak to my hindrance? It's just there. Mm. Well, Jesus is saying you can do that. If yeah. you, and we said earlier that you can have God's kind of faith. And yeah. the only way you have it when you, is when you receive Jesus into your heart. When you receive Jesus, God puts His faith on the inside of you. Yes. That's the same faith He used to create the world. Mm. And we're also seeing that that's the same faith that He uses to speak to hindrances, command, you know, mountains and, and stuff that come to stop you from enjoying life. Yeah. So what do we do to the mountain? Let's see verse 23. We ought to say to the mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart. So the first part says you've got to speak to your mountain. You know, whatever is in the way that's stopping you, like sickness and fear, don't just tolerate it. You've got to command it to be removed. Yeah. And command it to be cast into the sea. Yes. Right? That's very important. And it says in the next part, shall not doubt in his heart. See, that's very important. We're going to talk more about doubting and, and how doubting can be a hindrance in your life. But here Jesus is saying, when you speak to it, don't take your words back or otherwise don't doubt when you have spoken those words. Yeah. 
It says, but you should believe that what you say shall come to pass. You will have whatever you say. That's right. How, how amazing is that? Last line is so amazing. Jesus is saying that you can have whatever you say. Mm. So, you know, if you, there's a hindrance in your life, whether it's sickness or fear or uh, some kind of a, a depression. You know, depression, anything that's a problem mm. in your life, you can speak to it yeah. and command it. Commanding authority. Mm. You must use your authority. Yeah. Command it to be plucked up from the roots and cast into the sea. That's right. In fact, in, in um, there are some other scriptures that Jesus talks about a similar thing. If you see in the book of Luke, chapter 17, there was a situation of uh, a boy that needed deliverance. And so his father came to the disciples and told them to help to deliver his boy. But they couldn't. And so the disciples, they come to Jesus and they say, Lord, increase our faith. And the Lord says, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you shall say unto the sycamine tree, be removed or be plucked up by the root and be planted in the sea. Yeah. And it should obey you. Mm. You know, your problems, when you command them mm. to move from your way, they should obey you. Yeah. They should submit to the name of Jesus and the authority that you have. Mm. And so, in this case, Jesus spoke about a sycamine tree. Anything in your life that is deeply rooted, that is causing you to be maybe distracted from the things of God, that is causing you to be stopped in anything uh, fruitful that you're trying to do, a sycamine tree could be mm. something that's deeply rooted. Yeah. And then in Matthew, also, Jesus talks about uh, this mountain. And he says, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed mm. it could be you know your faith doesn't have to just be oh i don't have so much of faith as so and so yeah. you know i just have a little faith well that's good mm. start from where you are jesus said if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed think about a mustard seed mm. it's so small but when it's planted it grows into a huge tree yeah. and birds can come and rest on it mm. So Jesus said, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, no matter how small your faith is, you might think it's small, use it. Yeah. And Jesus said, say unto this mountain, remove hence to yonder place and it shall remove. Shall remove. So this is Matthew 17, 20. Jesus said, speak to the mountain, it shall remove and nothing shall be impossible to you. Yeah, those are powerful words. Mm. Nothing shall be impossible unto you. When you speak to the mountain, you speak to that hindrance that is in your pathway, you speak to that, you're actually using God's kind of faith. Yeah. But the key is to not doubt. Yeah. What you speak, believe that it will come to pass. Mm. And it will come to it pass. It will. And you know, verse 23, in the last part, it says, that you are to believe that those things which you say shall come to pass. That's right. You will have whatever you say. Mm. I mean, if you think of that word, you will have whatever you say. That itself should bring you, you know, wow, if I say, if I start speaking the word of God over my situation and my troubles that I'm going through, I can actually have that just by speaking it. I can have, you know, a life free from fear. I can have a life free from constantly being oppressed and tormented. I can have that because yeah. God has promised in his word that if I speak to that mountain, it shall be moved, mm. right? That is that is so important. You know, that, yeah. that just actually... It shows us that we should not let our faith lie dormant on the yeah. side of us. And what we're doing here is we're not just denying the pro problem or mm. the hindrance or the situation, yeah. but you're not magnifying it either. You're supposed to magnify your God, how mm. big your God is. Yeah. Yes, the facts may be, you know, plain out there. You can see it or you can feel mm. it. And you might think, well, this is a huge problem for me. How can I just overlook it? Well, we're not saying to deny it, yeah. but we're not. But we're also saying don't magnify it, mm. because you can't do anything if you just keep talking about the problem or the trouble or the the thing that's hindering you. The yeah. more you just talk about it, you, there's no faith involved in it, and there's not not going to be any results. Yeah. But if you speak to it, mm. the Bible talks a lot about our confession, about our words that need to be consistent. Mm. If you see in Hebrews 10, it talks about holding fast the confession of your faith. Your profession, whatever you declare by faith, hold fast to it. Don't waver from here and there and say, well, I, I, I said the word and I spoke the promises of God, but it looks like it's not going to work. Yeah. It, that's wavering. Mm. And Jesus said, don't be like that. Don't waver. And then in 2 Timothy, it talks about holding uh, fast to the form of sound words. 
hold fast to the word of God. Keep your confession of God's word straight. Yeah. And um, there's another one in Philemon about speaking every good thing that you have in Christ Jesus. That's right. Our words are very powerful. Our words are very powerful. You know, that shows us how powerful faith is. You know, faith ought not to just lie dormant on the inside of us. Mm. Remember, how do you get this faith? Well, when you, when you receive Jesus into your heart and you say, Father, I, I believe that Jesus Christ is Lord and I ask you to come into my heart and wash me with your blood and cleanse me, Jesus comes to live on the inside of you. And you know what? When you receive Jesus, not only are you saved or your eternal destiny is secure, but you also receive an amazing kind of faith. And like we've seen, this faith can be used to speak to hindrances, to mountains, to problems. And mm. how do you use your faith? By using the words that you speak. That's right. And um, yeah. like the way God used faith to create the world, mm. you can actually begin to create the life that you desire That's by right. the words you speak. Mm. You know, God used that faith. God is saying that we can have the same kind of faith. And it should make you want to actually think, wow, I need to get God's word into my heart. Because yeah. if this faith is able to move mountains, then certainly I want to start using that faith. Yeah. So be encouraged today that, you know, when you receive Jesus, you, you become a powerful person. You don't become some kind of a weakling. God makes you a powerful person. Amen. And the best part about it is that you can start to use the very same faith of God. So be encouraged this day. You know, when you receive Jesus Christ into your heart, you become a really powerful person. I mean, God comes to live on the inside of you. He's no longer far away from you. And the best part about it is that when God comes to live inside of you, you receive the same faith that He has. And this faith, as we have already seen, enables you to speak to mountains. It uh, you know, enables you to mountains such as sickness and fear, and you can command them to be moved. I mean, the faith that you have is so powerful. So be encouraged today that you can use faith speak to your mountains and they shall be moved.